Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is June 17th, 2012, and this is the 200th episode of Let's Play Test Driven Development. And um, that is pretty cool. Now, I originally had a grand idea for the 200th episode. I was going to do a, a big video showing how the design of the system had evolved over time. And I, I just got too busy. I don't have the time to do that. It would be a lot of work. So... Um, Instead, we're just going to pick up right where we left off in the last episode, but let me just show you what's going on here. Um, we, we've been working on getting persistence working, and we've been working on that for dozens of episodes, and it is actually, it is actually working now. Now you can run the application, and you can actually save it, and uh, all, that, all that works, which is cool. Um, but in the process, we've come across this we, we've ended up in some really interesting design territory, I think. And uh, I've been spending the time it takes to work on that design because I think it's establishing some patterns that will be relevant later on in the application. And, and also, I think it's just interesting design questions. So what we have here is we have this idea of user configuration, which is fundamentally a data structure that can persist itself. Uh, and user configuration is how we represent these concepts in the application. So these values right here are stored in the user configuration object. Now, this panel, this gray square, this gray box right here, this is represented in the application by a class called configuration panel. And configuration panel takes an application model and this this changes here are mediated or used to be mediated through application model. And that was a pretty clean and elegant design. So you went when you changed one of these, it would tell the application model to make that change. Now it doesn't work that way anymore. And I still I really liked the idea of the application model mediating changes like that. Um, but the problem was is that it was it was just getting a little bit too large. So now what happens is configuration panel operates directly on the user configuration class. So it changes the variable, which is just a simple public variable because user configuration is really just a glorified struct. Um, and then it tells application model that that value has changed. So we, we are perhaps drifting off into architecture astronaut territory here. What we have is working just fine. But I have this not so secret desire to eliminate mocks in my application. And if I can get rid of that configuration updated call, I can get rid of mocks. And I, I just I can't help but feeling that that would be good design. I think that would would lead to good things in the design. My perspective, and it's not shared by everybody. In fact, I don't think it's shared by that many people. But um, although it is shared by some people who are, are fairly notable, such as Ron Jeffries. Um, my perspective is that if you need to use mocks in your application, that's actually a sign that you don't have the right design yet, that you just haven't figured out exactly where the interface is and, and other important parts of your application uh, are. You, you haven't figured out how things should fit together properly. So they're a convenient crutch, but I like to try to delete them, get rid of them, because I think getting rid of them exposes new design ideas. Um, oops. That said, I'm not sure that what we're doing here is actually leading us in a good direction. So that's what we've been working on for the last several episodes now, and um, that's what I'm going to continue working on. really want to get rid of this application model spy. So the next thing to do, I know how to get rid of configuration update, and that's to do an observer. But I don't want to do that yet because the observer pattern is a bit complex. So I don't want to do it unless I need to. So first I want to see if I can get rid of the save mock that we have on application spy, model spy. If nobody's going to use save, then, um, then we don't need it. So let's see who's using this.
application model test is not using it because it's operating directly on the real model, not a mock. So who's using application model spy in general? Application frame test. Configuration panel test and save as dialog test are all using it. Hmm, and this code that's testing exception throwing Hmm, I don't know that we could ever get rid of that. But you know what? It doesn't have to go off of application model spy. It could just go off of application model directly. Let's see what else we've got. Yeah, configuration panel test uses it, but we could potentially get rid of that. And application frame test uses it. But doesn't seem to need to. What would happen? So are all, are all our tests running? What would happen if we just used application model directly? That seems to work okay. Is it tossing code onto our file system? I don't think so. Um, but one way to find out well, no, there's no easy way to find out. I guess one way to find out would be to modify user configuration and say here, So we see it right into the file system, but if we comment out 
all of our user configuration tests. Are we writing to the file system? No. Okay. So we're not writing to the file system. So we don't need the mock there. That must have been a leftover from some other time. So I can get rid of that, and I can get rid of that, and that. Which means that now, the only folks that are using this are configuration panel, which if we do an observer doesn't need to use it, and save dialog test, which will probably always have to use a mock of some sort. And the reason is, is because we're we're having we're actually changing the behavior of the save operation. Um, we could avoid. I mean, we could use do a real. We could avoid the mock by actually writing to a, a read-only file or something like that. Uh, and we actually do do that when we're testing the real file system code. But here, that doesn't seem like a good idea. So I think this is the one case where it makes sense to use a mock. But we don't need to make that a spy, a subclass of spy. We can just say it's a new application model. There's nothing about the spy that is relevant to our needs there, I don't think. Yep, got rid of that. So I think this kind of use is, is a perfectly legitimate use of mocks. Um, I, I, it's just fine. No objection to this kind of stuff whatsoever. Uh, and actually, a framework like Mokita would be probably be a better use than doing a manual mock because it will it will take care of stuff. It will it will make sure that all the other methods are stubbed out properly and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is fine. Although, you know what? Well, no. I think um I was going to say we don't even have to subclass application model. We could just subclass save as dialog, but that wouldn't work because then then we'd be mocking the thing that we were actually testing. What we're testing with that code is this piece right here. And um, we don't want to modify the code we're testing in the test. That would be weird. All right. So that means we don't need this and we don't need this. And just to make sure we don't need this, let's um, throw a not implemented exception or an unreachable code exception, actually. That is actually being used. All right, but it doesn't have to be because an application model, it's now a state-based uh, testing environment. We can just say
Oh, well, we had a we had the ability to ask it for its last save, but that's not happening anymore. Hmm. All right. Well, we're actually over time. These last couple of episodes have been kind of slow and weird, but we're sneaking up on this as usual. Um, I'm still not convinced. I, I feel like maybe we're trying to do this too soon, that we don't have enough code to actually illustrate a problem, but I'm just on a hobby horse regarding mocks. And um, that may be why this is so not going well. But um, I'm going to keep drilling on it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That will be interesting information for us too. So thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.